Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to the Witcher Netflix spoiler cast for nerds at large. I am Darby Hallman. I am Jeff Mayo. And Jeffrey, both of us have tossed the coin to our Witcher. We have experienced the entirety of the season one of Netflix's The Witcher and we are going to talk about it for the delight of whoever the hell stumbles on this video. Nice. Um, if you have not seen a Nerds at Large spoiler cast before, we are going to start with a very brief spoiler-free section. It, so, you know, you can hear what we have to say and maybe we'll be some deciding factor in you watching the show or not. I don't know. Maybe. So we're going to start spoiler-free for a little bit. We'll make it very, very clear when we dive into spoilers and it'll be a good time. So, Jeffrey... So Darby, let's uh, let's begin with just a little background um, of what you know, like our Witcher history going into this. I have played all the way through Witcher three, and I absolutely love it. We just did our um, top games of the decade. It may or may not have been number three. It's a pretty damn good game. I may or may not have been playing it literally twenty minutes before we started this podcast. Uh, because everyone's replayed that game now. <laughs> um, I played all the way through Witcher 3 and I've read the first like technically four Witcher books, but the first two are just the short stories and then I read like two of the novel ones. So yeah. that's about where I'm at. Um, but I don't I don't remember. It's It's been a while and I don't remember some of the things that happened. But, so I'm not like super knowledgeable on the books, but I am familiar with um, pretty much everything that happened in this season. I was already familiar with. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff, where are you at? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nada, zilch, nothing. He's heard of Yennefer before this and maybe knew that she had black I hair. I plan as Geralt in Soul Calibur. <laughs> there you go. Expert. <laughs> Expert. <laughs> Well, Jeff, as someone who is a newcomer to this, which is like, I think that's interesting to have me know, knowing a, somewhat about Witcher and you knowing nothing, because I think that's kind of what they're aiming for. I think they're trying to get, get both, both people. Yeah. So what did you think overall, spoiler free, of The Witcher Netflix? Sounds really good. Good. I'm glad. What did you like about it? Um, Henry Cavill's greatest girl. Yes. Um, you know, first grade. I can't remember actress's name. I'm bad with names, as you will find out through this whole thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it. I've seen her name before, but continue. Um, no wait. Uh, Anya Kalotra. Anya Kalotra. Probably butchering that. Shalotra. Shalotra. That that sounds more right. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Um. Honestly, all the storylines were cool. I think the way they um kind of combine them all together were cool and kind of went through them through the episodes yeah which um i'll just make sure that works yeah which that has actually been you know that's one of those things that seems to be a somewhat hit or miss thing for people is the way um it, you know we're not gonna get into spoilers what happened right now but they do tell the events of the season out of order like mm -hmm. you you get certain you get a lot of things that like and they don't quite reveal that like a hundred percent until a little bit into the season. Yeah, they, I mean, they, I, I, I'm, I'll just say this: I'm not going to say how or anything, but I think it's kind of okay to say that people who may have not have heard it just kind of get an idea there too. Yeah, things are out of order. Um, things become clear about when, where each thing are in the timeline about mm -hmm. halfway for the season. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a way of it's a confusing mess until then. It's kind of like it all just kind of. You know, everything's good or, and fine, but then everything kind of clicks and you get more understanding of it. And there are little hints yeah. that are easily missable throughout to give you a better idea of what it is. Like, there's one um, that I don't, I remember talking to Darby about before I was done, but he was farther than I that, that I mentioned something. And he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You, for, for, it, wait, an episode thing? thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll talk we'll, about we'll, it. Yeah. We'll say what it is. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I remember you not yeah. seem like you didn't realize it or something. Yeah. I think that was one of the ones I didn't catch. Yeah. That's. Like, and there's one in episode one that was also. Right. Something like that. That, that one was far. Which I, I'm glad. Like, easier to miss. Did you? Because, like, 
it, this is a little tricky for me because like I knew from the get go that all this like where the where this fit on the timeline because this is pretty much it was pretty faithful to the first book for the most part. I think there's certain things, especially with like um the non Geralt characters, that they obviously added a lot and like took elements from the future books and mixed it into here because the first two Witcher books are just short stories and they're yeah. mostly just following Geralt. Yennefer's in there some, series in there some, but it's like, you know, later on, it's mostly just Geralt. Um, and so they they put all those in Geralt stories are pretty much identically taken right from the the book and thrown in there. But they incorporated a lot of uh, Siri and Yennefer story and like added a lot more context so that they could introduce those characters now instead of having to wait until the very end or season two, which... Yeah, I remember, um, I can't remember her name, but the, you know... You know, I'm talking about what's your girl, you know, creator or whatever, show writer uh, or whatever uh, on Twitter. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Just, no, yeah. I, read, I actually want to actually want to give her credit because she's awesome. Yeah. But. Um, on, I read that little Twitter thread that you um, shared earlier today, and she pretty much said when it came to like serious stuff, like the way they did, the, the reason they did it the way they did is so they weren't just introducing, like you said, the end of the season or wait till next season. Yeah. Or, or like kind of thing of not have Unifer maybe until next season as far as adapting everything which and that would have Siri even a season later than that right and i think that would have been wrong it would have been one of those things because i mean it's not a spoiler to say Siri ends up being very important to this whole series i mean the the, the witcher in general i mean that's a very true in witcher 3 and everything i mean they made that clear um, in the first episode and yeah and that would have been that would have felt weird if she becomes that important but she's introduced that late and like they had a tricky thing here and this is why i was really i thought that they were just going to skip the short stories entirely and just start straight with the novels because that is a hard thing to do like to introduce this world with a bunch of short stories and then go into this novel you know i, I was interested to see how they did that and i i love the way they did it with the split timeline but obviously i was also coming into this show from episode one i could tell what they were doing and i'm like mm -hmm. oh, okay they're doing this out of order I'm I'm glad to see that you not knowing that were still like you followed it and even enjoyed that. Oh aspect yeah, yeah. Of it, right? yeah. I, th I think it's really well done, especially now we're at the end of the season. I feel like in kind of learning, just reading some ge like general things about um, the Witcher in general of how you know how much we're taking from the books and just kind of that kind of stuff. Like this seems about the being the best way to do it as far as you know explaining more of Jennifer and series stories earlier um and while still doing the short stories with Geralt to kind of help build their characters and the world yeah, and all introduce that the world while yeah. having to go straight very far from the book because it sounds like just based on what I've seen in this if they just like did what you were thinking they might have done just get the short stories they have to do add a lot of stuff yeah. for general world building stuff from the short stories into the there would have been a lot of just assumed relationships you, they would have had to introduce and be like uh Geralt and Jennifer have had this history uh yeah. Geralt and Syria you know it would have felt a lot less like you got to see a lot of these characters yeah, meet or, or they have to do a thing that could be scary and have to completely write their own story pretty much or, do or own, try to, a lot more liberties or try to like convey this entire story in like one episode or something yeah which you know like we've seen that kind of stuff happen in shows mm -hmm. before too where they just like we well, yeah, gotta rush through this and go like i'm really glad that they were like they were dedicated to like nope this is going to be this season as we are we are doing this this format and I mean, I can get why people don't like it because I mean, it, it is unconventional, you know, the the whole like split timeline thing. But like, it's it's not just that it's not just that I don't mind it. I actually really like that, and I think it makes for some interesting reveals like later on. Yeah, like they I, layer I it on top of each other. You see the same scene, but it's different this time yeah. because. You oh know. yeah, it's kind of going with that again. Not gonna say what it is, but I saw some people kind of saying who. We're kind of confused by the time or didn't care for it. Like it's like uh, I kind of wish they may have added like a little thing with words saying the time, like the year or something. Yeah. Or but there is something in the last episode in particular when I'm like this would not be as good if that did happen because we would right. we would know what's going on. Because it's not like they just did the split timeline for the hell of it. I think they actually use it 
to tell the story in a mm-hmm. cool way you know like i think that that whole split timeline and stuff can be really good it's just hard to do it's just hard to do and like get and i guess maybe they didn't do it perfect because a lot of people didn't understand it but like i actually really 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 enjoyed it and but I do think that is something that's going to, even if you don't like it this season, I, it's not going to be like this in the future, or at least not nearly to this yeah. degree. You I, know? I do I think, think potentially, sign, and, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to make a blanket statement of this for all people who are confused by it. Cause I can nope, see, you're an idiot. And Jeff's saying you're an idiot if you don't. No, understand. but like I, like I said earlier, there are some like little subtle stuff until you get to the halfway point, episode four, I guess, in the yeah. thing where... They it can be it. confusing where things are, but there is subtle stuff that kind of like, okay, this is where things right. are. There is the split timelines. And yeah, all that. It, it, like the epi- like episode four when this happens, like it, it's not like a blind side. It's like we've given you enough like layups or whatever. But if you if you haven't gotten it now, then here's the mm. boom. You know, yeah, so. I just saw someone that was confused that series storyline was before Geralt's, like from the start. Yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. Mm. Which yeah. Yeah, no, and it's one of those like by the end it all makes sense even even if you're lost with some of it. And, and I also think just because of the short story format, I really do honestly believe you could be lost as far as how this connects together and still really enjoy this show because every episode kind of has its own self-contained story with like a message, a beginning and end, some twist. It really, especially that first episode, which is my favorite of the short stories, mm-hmm. really introduces the morally gray aspect of this world and the mm-hmm. uh, making the hard choices and you know Geralt trying to be neutral, but he's not. <laughs> you know, he's all, never all these neutral. things. Like it's, he claims otherwise, but he's not. Yep, and that's <laughs> that, that. You'll see. And good on Dan Allen for calling him out on this shit. Yeah, it's great. The, the, that's a message you'll see all throughout the books, all throughout the game, and everything else. Well, um, before we get into spoilers, like yeah, let's just talk about a little bit about the acting because really, like holy shit, dude, Henry Cavill is Geralt. <laughs> yeah, he like. And I was so I was worried about it. I I was worried, especially when they did that first teaser, and it just looked so bad with a dollar store wig and everything. But yeah, like, that was really early on. I can't. I don't know when exactly that was, but it was time. probably like a year ago, at least ago. Yeah, it, it was still something that's like maybe you should don't put that out. But yeah. hey, it all ended up working. But like, not only does he he looks great. I mean, he looks he really looks like they they nailed like the eyes, like the like weird like supernatural looking eyes and everything, and just the way he like the way he's built the way he looks the way he moves like the choreography and everything but also it's more than that like i think henry cavill just really nails like Geralt is a character that doesn't that has to convey a lot of emotion through very little dialogue yeah a lot i mean he is that is kind of his whole thing is that he's a very reserved a quiet character who seems like he's emotionless but he's absolutely not and that's a hard thing to convey because mm. like Geralt almost Geralt's kind of funny in a way he seems like the straight man but like there are little things like the use of fuck that will like uh, get more into in spoilers but like that seems funny but it's a legitimate thing it builds Geralt's character Geralt becomes he's a stoic badass but he's also very kind of endearing and it's kind of like he's not perfect either yeah. he's not just this badass all the time like he has flaws and I just think Henry just nailed that mm-hmm. absolutely nailed it I'm like okay. so blown away, and then even by but past him, I think like Yennefer is probably my favorite character in this. In this I whole see thing. that to be a common sentiment. Yeah, yeah, I can't disagree. <laughs> yeah, um, so all around, I think the acting was good. Even the, a lot of the side characters, I thought were mm-hmm. were really really yeah. good. Being series actress is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think thinking back on the scenes, like she did have less going on than yeah, definitely not screen time. But that will. That will change. That will <laughs> certainly change. Yeah. All right. Well, you have any last things for getting the spoiler? Should people watch? Yes. What? No. And if you're on Netflix, which you probably do, if you're a human being at this point, probably. Um. Why not? Just give it a try. Why not? Why not? Uh, he says, "Do it." Yeah. No. I think it's if you like need to fill a Game of Thrones size hole in your life, like. I, and I think that works. I think it, it scratches some of the itches of Game of Thrones, but it's definitely not Game of Thrones. Like, not saying it's like it, it's just different. It's just different in a lot of ways. It's a lot, a lot more like centralized on the character, whereas Game of Thrones is like telling this grand story from all over the place. This one's a lot more, you know, centralized, and it just kind of has a different tone. And it's yeah. it's it's more fantasy than Game of Thrones, but it definitely still has the like 
politics coinciding with magic and you know, cool. It makes what I've seen the once they get to the actual novels. Yeah. The political stuff ramps up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it does. It definitely does. And I hope they handle it a little better than the actual writer, because like th- that's kind of my least favorite part of The Witcher and my favorite part of Game of Thrones. You know, it's it's weird. I don't know but alrighty. Well, from this point onwards, we will be talking full spoilers. So go watch the show, and uh, you know, come back, and then you can listen to the rest of this. All right. So three, two, one. Fuck. Can't believe Geralt's dead. Can't believe Geralt's fucking dead. What Man. a twist. What a Is Ned Stark all over again? <laughs> Good thing we got a Geralt clone right yep. there at the end, you know? <laughs> yep. And a clone of Big Boss. But he doesn't say we fuck the same him. way. No, he says buck. Yeah. It's like, what does that even mean, dude? I don't know. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey. Um, what do we? Uh, how do we want to go about this? You want to kind of just uh, uh, uh go like yuck, yuck. Do you want to kind of just like go through and like maybe, maybe we can just briefly talk? We don't have to necessarily like dissect every episode, yeah. but maybe we can just we can start the way and just see how the conversation goes. By going goes. through it, maybe that could um yeah bring you. So what did did you think about this first episode? I did I did see like some controversial like. Not controversy, but there was like people. Some people loved the first episode, like me. <laughs> Other people were a little more like, "Hmm, that was kind of slow," or "That was kind of you know whatever." Um, I thought it was really good. I did think though, it did have a lot of uh, proper nouns. Yes, it, it could be hard to get into, but yeah, it, I agree. But it is the first episode introducing you to a world, and it's you're going into it when the main character has been at this for a while so <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i think that is definitely the biggest uh problem and that that's whenever i had only watched the first two episodes not even the full second episode and i was talking to you about it and i was saying i'm a little worried about you not liking it because i'm already having there's already things happening in it that i understand because i've played the games and everything but like I can definitely understand everyone's hearing Nilfgaard, yeah. <laughs> like a Striga, of like Kikamora, all this other stuff, and Sintra and everything. He's like, what the fuck is in you? This? Mm-hmm. I could definitely get that. But I think that first episode, like, it kind of shines in spite of that because of the whole Rinfrey. Rinfrey versus, um, I always forget the guy's name. Strigamore. Like the, that whole dilemma, like I just I love that in the book too. Like in just how how that like at the end it really I think that's the perfect um story to like set up Geralt's character of trying to be neutral, but like it's just you can't. Like no one's truly neutral. Like mm-hmm. by making a choice, you know, you like by doing anything like this, you've made a choice and like how that kind of goes spectacularly wrong in some ways at the end and he that whole butcher of blaviken like that that's a, like a, a title that like haunts him for like a forever in the books yeah. you know like there are people that's like when that gets spread around to everywhere everyone just says he was like a murderer he just like murdered this town and everything you know yeah so i think like i really i just really dig that whole plot and that fucking sword, yeah. that fucking fight scene at the end, mm-hmm. that the, one the, shot. The worst part about it is we, I don't think we got something as far as like pure sword fighting, something to that level for the rest of the season. No, not to that level. There, there were a cool, uh, like, like, like I was telling you before you even watched it, it's not that flashy of a show or of mm-hmm. a season at least, which I, can, I like in a lot of ways because I think it, it, the character moments were super good. Here's, here's but the, here's but the that, that scene definitely promised something yeah, that yeah. wasn't necessarily... Here's the thing with me with all this, with a lot of media and this, which why I probably come off more positive in yeah. a lot of things. I don't really go into things with much expectations for what a thing is. <laughs> <laughs> like what I want it to be or what I want to happen. I just kind of yeah. go in and let let it take me for a ride. I mean, I think I, don't know, I think expectations can be something, but like, I mean, I didn't go into this with high expectations, but I like legitimately love this. Thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, well, I'm talking more is like the whole action against being a slower thing. So no, yeah. it could have gone either way, and I could have been pleased. Like, yeah, it's done well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that stuff's really good. I thought the whole um, kingdom coming down. Mm, <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah, right off the bat. Yep. Um. Yeah, and I think a lot of those shots were really cool. Yeah, it's kind of the first kind of string of mysteries where um I'm forgetting the name. Queen Lady tells Calanthe. Yeah, 
I'm bad with names. That's fine. Um, I'm, well, working. I'm also interested in that note for you because it's another thing that me, like me and my sister, were talking about. Like we know about the fall of Centro, but I was I was worried that people coming into it for the first time would be like, "Why do I care about this kingdom that I haven't seen?" And I think they do a good job of like as the season goes on like showing you why you care but i also think in that episode they do a good job of making calanthe and siri and the 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 guy and i never know his name mouse man well yeah him too but i was talking about the like her husband person or whatever oh, yeah, lover guy. person like all of, but mouse sack too all of them like i think they do a very good job in that first episode of immediately making all of them endearing mm-hmm. because they have this like kind of they're this ruling family, but they're kind of laid back. You know, they kind, kind of, of don't, playful. Yeah, they're playful and like uh, Calanthe is just such an awesome character. Yeah. Oh, I was getting at it. I was like, like at the end, they kind of spread the first kind of seeds of mystery with Calanthe telling Siri um, to find Geralt, uh, Rivia, and the whole thing of like right. destiny and stuff. Like, what so, exactly? Yeah, what do we do? What does that mean? Yeah. yeah, what does that mean? Did I miss something? I know I didn't, but what? And, <laughs> and then that, obviously it became clear a couple episodes later. Yeah, and I think that's cool to like. Especially since you know, like now, that Geralt and Ciri are not going to see each other until the very end. At least, like right from the beginning, because you do that split timeline thing, you're able to like link them immediately. So the reviewer is like, "So how is how are they gonna, you know, yeah, how are they gonna link up now, you know, whatever." Yeah. Also, uh, kind of one of those timeline things that I kind of didn't realize till later, but Malsack, um if if you look like in the different timelines there's like in the end like when episode one when you see him he has gray in his beard but when you get episode four he really doesn't Uh, okay yeah so this is kind of stuff like that yeah that was that is cool at least i think that's the way it was yeah i can see that there i can totally see that yeah that was cool so yeah i love that first episode i think it set up things really well i mean it, it immediately makes the whole like thing interesting of how this is going to connect and just i i don't know like setting up Geralt's personality and you know those dilemmas um but then uh we move on this is actually where like again this was the episode the second episode is one that kind of caught me jenny and wolfie like me and my sister and brother-in-law who are big witcher fans off guard which was yennefer's like origin you start you're seeing like yennefer's yeah, origin yeah, story. Th- now this is where and as someone who's out of it, I'm going to assume you kind of agree with this where I'm like, where I, the thing I said earlier about this is the best possible way for them to do it because I know this universe stuff mm. is pretty non It's like right. none of this happens in the book. It's right. just kind of b- briefly referred to. Like even her hunchback is kind of briefly referred yeah. to. But they just made a whole thing about it's like, this is this character. Mm. We're not going to fill in the blanks for you little hints later. We're just going to give you this whole backstory that doesn't really exist anywhere else and i think it worked so yeah. well it, it was really good because like yeah i think in in the books basically that whole sequence with the gin later that was the first time you saw Jennifer. yeah so you didn't even know like i knew who she was because the games but in the books you don't even you don't know anything about her she's just a mysterious sorceress basically mm-hmm. but i think this is a lot better yeah. This is another way where I already think like I'm kind of preferring getting this narrative through the, the show because I think that this, I mean, because it, it fits like you knew that something like this happened. You knew that she had a rough history before she um, went to to side the breeze and um, mm-hmm. I forget Eratusa. Um and you know that like it wasn't good at Eratusa either. But like I think this filled in the gap so well and it was just really well written. Like she had. I you could argue that like Geralt doesn't have like the most definitive of arcs across this whole season because there was a lot of like one shots over and over again. Yeah, because it's supposed to be a thing of short stories, and right. I think um, what makes this why doing it this way makes so much better. Good for this medium is the fact when Unifer is introduced in the books, it is a b- bunch of short stories, so it's okay. I think it's kind of okay. So it makes sense to have mysterious. Th- Right, I mean, especially at the time, they, I'm going to guess the author didn't know how big a role Unifer is necessarily going to play. I, yeah, but, I don't know but, exactly, but yeah, but going into this, you know what she's going to do. So let's take yeah. advantage of 
the way the medium is and us with the knowledge of what's going to happen to try to make things make more sense, make people care about this character more right off the bat. Right. Like you immediately, like in the short story, you're basically seeing that from like Geralt's perspective only. Yeah. But now because of the show, when you get to the episode with the gen, you've spent a good amount of time with both of these characters. So, mm-hmm. and it also, it's, um, What's good about this is you learn more about the Brotherhood, who no. I, can, I can definitely tell, especially, well, later in the season, I'm assuming more in the future, plays a bigger role. So getting some more background about them and the way they do things and all of that seems like it just. Yeah, and helps. I think it's going to make it a lot better because a lot of that stuff was just shoved in in the, in the first novel. And it's like, here are all these sorceresses. Here are all these people. Here's all this politicking. It's like, oh, God, what are, like, what are, who are any of these fucking people? Yeah. And it, they, this is definitely going to help a lot because you already have faces to latch on. Oh, yeah. To. Like, I was able to recognize a lot of the sorceresses later. He's like, oh, yeah, this person for the first episode, and this is what happened to them. And yeah. I know they made it, um, obviously, I'm by their names, but the, um, the black sorceress, the whole Fringilla. Thing. Yeah, Fringilla, who turned bad. Mm. And I like the whole thing. I even realized when I saw her, I was like, this happened just because Yennefer was like, no, I'm not going there. And then mm. I like how they brought that up later. It's like, Yen, you did this. Yep. It was like, yep, that would have been Yen in uh, Nilfgaard that was supposed to be. Which, yeah, that was cool. And it just kind of colors. It colors like Yennefer's whole character because, like in the books, it's just like Yennefer is introduced, and you get to know her eventually a lot more, and it, you know, and then the, and then your perception ends up aligning with where we are now. But um, here, like in the books, she was just kind of she was very reckless and wild, and like that's just she was reckless and wild, and that was it. That was her character, and like you knew that you didn't know anything more about her, and that was it. But here, it's like you see that she's very reckless and rebellious, but you know why because yeah. you've seen where she came from, and she even talks about like I, that was cool. Like she talked about like yeah, I of course I drank up the attention and everything because I never got it before, but so I, I drank it up and it was great for a while, but it wasn't you know mm-hmm. didn't make her happy. It was like yeah, I think that was just really cool. Jennifer's arc was just handled so damn well. And the acting was really good. like from the like the way the way I imagine it was like I don't know exactly how they did uh, her. I imagine it was the same actress like for the the hunchback version and the later on just yeah. the CGI there or whatever else. But I think she played both characters very well and they're mm-hmm. very different. You know the transformation. Yeah. And oh, right. And yeah. I was worried. I was also like I I thought that this whole transformation was going to take like the entire season almost but i kind of liked it, it was like nope she is yennefer by episode four or something so like, it, it okay three, three yeah yeah which like they gave it long enough for it to make sense but also it's like oh you we still have the whole rest of the show to be yeah, yeah. yeah a potential um, criticism is though because that moved kind of fast you didn't get the sense that yennefer did becomes as an old powerful um mage yeah. Um, and the fact and had this relationship that she does at the end of the season with her teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the, the middle is definitely the part that is the weakest with the, you know, yeah. like the, we definitely had, we saw her beginnings and then they had to, you just assume, <laughs> think about her becoming a badass, And then now she's a badass. you know, it was, yeah. uh, but Darby you, and, you, and you, even like the, um, scene in the middle or whatever with, uh, the, 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 woman who is sacrificing the baby and mm-hmm. everything especially in hindsight that scene seems almost purely just to set up she wants to be a mom and yeah like it, that, that scene doesn't feel like it matters all that much other than that you know it just felt like a plot device set up or whatever so yeah i think that was a little Darby, weird. You, i saw you scroll on getting ready to tie the next episode we missed the most important thing that happened this episode the introduction. Yes. Did you ask you the bard? Yeah. His name is Dan. I'm going to refer to him as Dan. <laughs> okay. I played 190 hours of the Witcher. No, 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 the reason I did that is for people who may not know <laughs> yes, the yeah. name Dandelion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just let the listener know I will I will never refer to him as Jasker. Not not from a protest. It's just my brain can't be rewired. <laughs> um, but yes. I mean, isn't he just great? He is great. <laughs> he is great. I saw all the on the IMPD bd page or whatever that he was only in like three episodes like he was only in that few i thought he was in more but then it's like hey, i guess that means hmm. i think i saw it was only that well, yeah that seems surprising to me too but i guess 
I guess there was like an episode in between, I think, before. Like, yeah. Okay, never mind. It was in four episodes. He was, he was in half. Okay. 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 No, he's great. Uh, yeah. And he is like one of the best parts of The Witcher 3 and the novels. And I think this guy nailed it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's really good casting. <laughs> With the, the comic relief guy, but like he, he also can be serious at times. Like I think they, they play, they just make that character so well. And he, the dynamic between him and Geralt is just so perfect mm-hmm. because they're polar opposites and it just works so I well. I am curious what happens with him in the future, just from a timeline perspective. Just because, um, to be honest, it's one of those things I'm not completely unreserved of the timeline where they meet, where he meets there um, in episode two. Yeah. Um, obviously, with the we see him at the very least 12 years-ish before the present because mm. we see him at the uh, ball when mm. Siri's mom is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously he's aged. 12 years since right that time so i'm i'm just curious that he's became the same maybe adds a couple fake wrinkles or what yeah i mean i well we've already yeah yeah it's just also thing because um, uh, it's one of those things i'm not 100 sure where in the timeline like the whole dragon thing is i think it's last yeah time. so we so yeah we never i guess we didn't we didn't see him after that the jump right no, I don't believe so. Yeah, we so. haven't seen them at all after uh, the jumps. So yeah. And it's one of those things, because uh, and generally, uh, it doesn't matter, so I didn't really think about it much, but the dragon stuff, I don't know what's the difference in time between that and... I don't, yeah, I'm not even 100% sure, because, again, those the short stories were kind of separated. Uh, yeah. I don't know exactly where things line up, like, distance from each other. I just know, like, this is before this, this is before this, this is before this. I don't yeah. know exactly where. We get we get some general time things, because Universe says, says stuff like, uh, when she was in the um carriage with the mom who ended up trying to sacrifice her baby like a yeah. person yeah. um very mean. The, that it was 30 years i believe since she started there yeah that's, that's what, what she, she said. said and then at the end she said three lifetimes but that can mean anything <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's definitely um i mean yeah it's like spoilers it doesn't end up mattering that much dandelion just like kind of the uh, uh, dandelion just ends up back in the story you know it's not yeah. like some big thing of like the, i know the, i'm just the, more curious the, what they're gonna do yeah, with, yeah. i'm assuming he's in it more nope that's it that's okay. our that's a series wrap <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. um so i'm curious what they're gonna do as far as the actor goes yeah i i imagine probably nothing okay. f- physically i'm just yeah that they didn't really Jennifer didn't look any or Jennifer's not supposed to look any different but no it's, neither really is girl I, yeah, I, I don't say the two people we see throughout time well, yeah. all the people we're supposed to see throughout big or differences like, in time yeah. aren't supposed to look different I have a feeling they will I think he does mention crow's feet at some point during one of his final ones <laughs> <laughs> I think like 12 years is enough to where they can feel like all right we don't have to add extra makeup to this guy yeah. we could just <laughs> we could just let him be mm-hmm. him and I, I don't think anyone's gonna like fault them too much for that but mm-hmm. yeah we can move on through um you know what was the, what was three uh well Jennifer's whole transformation and um the was that the Str- yeah that was the striga episode yeah. and which, i introduced in the trees which i also that's a again legitimately like the, the like these three were like my favorite <laughs> um like three of my favorite uh original short, short stories short stories um Oh, yeah, that, the two was the Sylvan. Yeah, that that was that was cool. The introducing the elves and everything yeah. like that whole it was like again like boom 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 like all three of those were like hard decisions that definitely like nailed the whole uh, Witcher vibe. But I think the Stringer episode was was super good because the the you know asshole king and the, the like is just there's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that you kind of have you do have to pay attention to the dialogue. Again, this is. Not a very like crazy flashy yeah. thing. And but this I think is the one I was referring to earlier, where the whole difference in timeline stuff that yeah. I noticed that sound like you didn't. But yeah. So what was that again? Um, sure. it was at the ball where um Jennifer does her big reveal of her glamorous new form. You see, uh, yeah. you see King Dude as a kid uh, okay, with right. messing with his sister. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. like okay, this is this is a good gotcha. bit. Of the yeah, mess. yeah. I did not catch that. Uh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. I also kind of recognized it at first that uh, Magnet because I think they show a portrait 
of him as a kid with the sister and i recognize the kid kind of like okay and then the mom threw the line about him messing with his sister like, uh, there we yeah, go yeah they did they hung on the portrait so that's yeah i didn't i didn't really catch the so yeah there were a couple things in the early episodes that were like that it's like to give you an idea where things might yeah. be in the timeline relative to where oh, cool. like Gerald. Uh, we also we got we got to see trist trist obviously did not have that big of a role in this at all and like and she's she's not going to have them uh, nearly as big of a role as she like for anyone who played the witcher 3 i mean i don't think in this entire series she's probably not going to have as big a role i mean like you know tris has a bigger role than yennefer in the witcher 3 and i, I mm-hmm. think that's just not i think that's more of a cd project red thing than it is a yeah. sepkowski thing but overall i mean i think the, this one's fine she obviously doesn't really look like obviously the i think the witcher 3 tris looks a lot different than the book tris but even the book tris this is the one that looks like the least like at least I imagined her, you know, mm-hmm. whereas like Jennifer and Geralt and Dandelion are like, oh, um, immediately I look at her. It's like, oh, she doesn't look like I have to remind myself that this is supposed to be trust. Mm-hmm. But I think she was fine, though. I mean, we, I think we yeah. just haven't seen enough of her. But the whole Striga thing was cool. This was one of the best fucks. <laughs> he like throws the like chain, <laughs> rips it off. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> And I love it, like you said, this was, I think this was uh, one of the central episodes that was like, hey, he's not Superman. He's not yeah. just an ultimate badass <laughs> that Superman, can take it. Hmm. <laughs> he's not just the ultimate badass that can kill everything at every moment, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get his ass kicked, mm-hmm. which was cool. Yep. What'd you think about the CGI monsters? Um, I'm not as harsh on the CGI thing. Mm-hmm. I think everyone compares it to giant multi-million dollar mo- movies and game of thrones and i think that's yeah. unfair to most things yeah i think people should stop I just, just immediately calling that cgi bad i'm like no <laughs> i mean it can i mean like it, it's one of those things if, if a movie like relies on it or a movie or show relies on it too much it doesn't really matter if you can help it or not if what i'm looking on the screen is just constantly immersion breaking and bad then yeah i'm gonna call it out yeah. i don't think that this gets to that level because no. i think it's used sparingly enough like yeah it doesn't look perfect but i also don't think it looks so bad to where it's mm-hmm. a problem and the way especially with these the way they told these stories like they're you know infrequent enough but i mean i do think if you have a show that is like cgi monsters all over the damn place and they all look pretty bad it's like yeah i'm probably not gonna like that you know that's uh, so i can be kind of quote unquote picky about it i just don't like looking at bad things (laughs) over and over again but i don't think it was that I, I, i think it was sparingly enough and it wasn't that bad the worst thing was like those zombies things or whatever that attacked him in like the second last episode those were pretty bad, but everything else was <laughs> everything yeah. else was like worked pretty well. Um, yeah, we can move on. Oh uh, yeah, this, and this is the law of surprise one, which is definitely it's like the most con- confusing of the stories. I think it was also even when I read the books, like the law of surprise is just kind of a weird thing, especially for us Americans. But America, I think the law of surprise, America. at least from what I understand, is like a thing from Polish folklore or whatever. It's it's basically like it's taking something like basically like an urban myth or something or like a weird tradition that people did. Like if you owed someone a life debt, you get the the thing that they have that they they find at home but don't know they had. It's really weird. But the Witcher, I think, basically just takes that weird like like old tradition and makes it into like an actual magical binding thing that will fuck you up if you don't do it which is kind of cool you know yeah (laughs) it kind of goes into the whole thing of like witcher is very fairy tale like it's fairy tale but twisted it's like everything feels like you know it has like destiny and there's curses and all this other stuff which just sounds very like fairy tale-y but it's also (laughs) There's gonna like people are gonna die and things are gonna happen and I think that was really cool with you know this happens or whatever and he he tells Geralt it's like you're gonna we're gonna be doomed if you if you go back on this he's like oh no it'll be fine and then they like pass over the flag and show the tor- the destroyed Sentra <laughs> which yeah. you know well, I know I also like when he's like uh do you don't have to worry about it and then series mom froze up obviously because morning sickness and he's like fuck. <laughs> yeah, which I I didn't remember this, but people did say that that is something that's different. Is I don't remember this, but apparently in the books, 
Geralt actually like kind of set, does use the law as surprise on purpose, like knowing that he's getting Siri. But then this in the show they do it more of a, he's like ah fuck it law surprise like sure whatever and it was yeah. an accident. I kind of like it being an accident more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of like that where you just like yeah sure this whole thing was law of surprise. I'm gonna get a spoon. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that created a cool dynamic of Calanthe, you know, mm. Calanthe's being like, nope, I'm going to do anything for my daughter. I'm going to try to kill you like three times. Yeah. <laughs> Which was- I also like when the um, farmer dude is like, law of surprise for saying him from the zombies. <laughs> no! Yeah, no, 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 just give me an ale. Just give me an ale. Please, <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I don't want any more kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Forgot what happened there. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Did you have anything on episode four? Would I'm trying to remember what happened with the other peoples. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that was was that the end of uh, Yennefer's transition, or, or was that the last? That was the last that was episode. episode three. This was when the whole baby thing. Nah. Yeah. 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 In series in a forest. What did you think about Mouse Sack? They're pretty cool. He's pretty. He's pretty fun. Yeah. He is. <laughs> pretty chill dude too bad he's dead yeah he is dead dead as fuck like he was in he was in the show a lot but he was dead for like uh, half the episodes he he was in yeah he died pretty early yeah (laughs) yep uh so episode five uh this this is the gin this is also i think a really good episode because this is when you first see Mm -hmm. uh jennifer and Geralt together and oh they fucking they fucking they fucking okay so I'm seeing something here. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah. People fucking. This is. <laughs> yeah, obviously, people fucking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to clip that out. So. But the whole thing with the gin and stuff is a couple years after the the Those thing that happened people. in episode four. Right. So what I'm kind of getting at is the whole thing. Which we, they they did do that at the beginning because they that that was when Dandelion runs into Geralt. And he's like, yeah. "Oh, I haven't seen you. Yeah, that's right. That's What's right. it been like a year or two or something?" Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'm getting at is it seems like about we're just getting closer and closer to the whole um, to the, the, the whole thing with the whole thing with Dandelion. Be like, okay, it may not be that far since we technically last mm, saw yeah. him there. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking about them not changing his actor because I thought like I thought I thought there was some time skip, and yeah, there was a time skip oh, at yeah, least yeah. with Dandelion. That you know, but yeah, they just throw these out, which is fair. But you know, yeah, <laughs> I think they made they made them pretty organic. It didn't feel like it was for. It didn't feel like it's been two years. Stare at camera. Do you get it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, like... I, I agree, but sometimes when all this stuff is easy to forget. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. You for, just throw out those lines. Um. But I agree with you. The way they're doing it is fine. Um, so yeah, the whole the whole gin thing. I, I, I really like it that it's like we we fought Dandelion had it and that he just got cursed for it. Oh, yeah. Then it, we found then oh that was just Geralt's first wish when he told you to shut the fuck up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so good. God, it's so good. Because it took me a second. It was like when they said um. The, when the guy's head explodes, like, that's your second wish. Like, what's... Oh. Uh, <laughs> what was the first... Oh. There no, we go. It's legit. It's so fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> this is where, like, I kind of, like, I love the humor, the humor in Witcher, like, in the games and the books and the, the um, TV show is just so good it's just so it's so like sim- it's so like dry and kind of like witty humor mm-hmm. and it's like you wouldn't expect humor in this case it's a pretty serious show otherwise but like there's definitely times like that where especially Geralt and Dandelion's relationship where he's just like shut the fuck up bard <laughs> he's like mm-hmm. what was he? he's like fuck off bard yeah. <laughs> he's covered it there but yeah no that was uh so, and then you just keep feeling yeah. some aw Geralt does care. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you get a lot of that too. Geralt yeah. trying to be a hard ass, but he, he he's actually a teddy bear. Yeah. And then at the end there, well, obviously, yeah, me, Jennifer, we had that giant orgy. Giant orgy. <laughs> which, if you think about it, it's kind of messed up. It's kind of kind of red. You're having, you're yeah, having sex against weird. their will. Yeah, I, I did see the um, showrunner or the writer was talking about how, like, she was like, yeah, that's a, that is something that, you know, like we we didn't see it that way because we saw it as like these are desires that they all wanted but didn't 
but yeah. like but didn't act on because of like societal pressures and Yennefer is basically taking away all societal pressure so it's basically like they're just using their primal instinct which i think that like which actually they kind of did set up with the, the you know that first one with the, with the yeah with the boner with the boner spell which is uh they, they kind of set it up there like i think you're supposed yeah. to believe that these people like they're basically Jennifer just freed them mm-hmm. to act on what they wanted to do anyway i don't think i don't think it's literally yeah, Jennifer yeah, yeah. was like you fuck you you fuck you you know yeah. i think it was more just everyone's horny everyone's yeah. horny yeah. i think that's the way you're supposed to take that and that's the way like she made it sound so so i don't think it's quite as rapey as it, as yeah. it uh, maybe feels <laughs> but the yeah, all that kind of stuff happens uh Yen tries to steal the yin and try and get all its infinite power so she can have a baby. baby. Um, then Geralt used that last witch for something, which I imagine is one of those mysteries that will never be solved. Yeah, you, you also don't... Um, it's, it's the same way in the books. You, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know he made a wish, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. You can guess what it is. I saw some people say it was... We know what it is based on the end of the dragon things like oh he made me love you or crap like that and he's like no it's like i believe girl when he says that i yep. i do think it's this thing it's one of those things that might come up much later i don't know or it might just be something that looms over everything forever forever never get answered um but yeah and and then they fuck but probably best thing in the whole series is that his first wish was shut <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up yeah oh it's so good um all right well, we can move on we're uh getting into the latter episodes here rare species it's when yeah. when dan lion girl and yinny go after a dragon <laughs> the, i still I, I love the thing where it was uh Gar- Garol, you come h- help us hunt this dragon no yennefer walks in you son of a bitch i'm in <laughs> <laughs> Even then, I was like, oh, no. Dan was like, no, no, we're good, no. And it's also one of those things where it's like, you know, t- you know, we got an idea that time passed because they, with some conversations between Geralt and, y- and Yennefer and um, Dan Line for other stuff, it's like, okay, this isn't, this doesn't sound like this is the first time since the last, the, you know, last time we saw them, the first time they met. Yeah. He's like, there were other times in between. Yeah, which that is something that like the show kind of had to rush through. Which yeah. in an ideal world, you got to see more of their relationship develop. Yeah, adding like, like two episodes in between. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think even in the books, there's a lot of like they talk about their history in between these two short stories that you didn't see, but you definitely still got more of a sense of it than this. Yeah, which that is a bummer. But I am interested. With you. I actually, I think in the games and the the books. I think like for for it being an action fantasy series, they actually do romance really well. Like y- Yennefer and Geralt's relationship is like so tumultuous, but like you just really want them to be together. But it's kind of endearing. And I thought the the dialogue in here, just like the like line to line dialogue between those two, was really really good. Like I don't know why, but to me, like the line that really stuck out to me, maybe most of this entire um, show, and it's kind of a simple line, but like I love the when Geralt said, "I I say more words, I say more, more words, words to you him. in a day than I do in an entire week, and I always regret it." I I think that's just such a good line. That's just mm-hmm. such a good line, especially for Geralt, because Geralt is just completely silent, but mm-hmm. like. That even though you you really weren't able to see him say all those words, you, that kind of like got that message of like he really does open up around her. He really is kind of a happier, different person around her, mm-hmm. which I think was really cool. It's yeah. just a really good line. Yeah, I think I think overall it's just kind of fun. It's just kind of weird in the moment type thing, but you just kind of think about it, it's like okay, those were kind of more as far as the story that the the show's trying to tell more inconsequential things. But it is I think the lines they said we're good enough to be like okay yeah this stuff did happen and yeah. you know even dandelion was around for it <laughs> yeah. for some of it <laughs> and uh i think their chemistry is really good too like yeah. when the, later on when they're whenever they're in the tent <laughs> mm-hmm. i think their pillow talk is very good they just yeah. like they they wrote these characters really well and both of these actors are really really good mm-hmm. it seems like Geralt and Yennefer. and i'm just so blown away i just god <laughs> I expected worse. I expected yeah. <laughs> worse for this show. 
It's really good. Um, and yeah, what'd you think about the whole reveal that Dude Man was the dragon and all that at the end? Um, I would at first it's like, hmm. But then he mentioned something about the um telling the said something to Geralt like, Oh, I knew you wouldn't hurt a dragon or something to that effect. Like, okay, I know there's something more to that that we'll probably find out later. Some background stuff. I don't know if it's just like a general Witcher thing or something. I mean, I think it's also Well I mean, also I can't remember if there was more to it, but I mean I think a lot of it is just Geralt like Geralt as a person is like Gerald tries not to he he's a badass killer, but he tries not to kill. Like yeah. he's he's kind of a softy. Yeah. What were you saying though? Yeah. Oh, well, this may not mean anything, but you know when he was having his hallucinations during the last episode, Dragon Dude came up and said some words. Uh, he was yeah. tiny. Yeah. It's a tiny dragon, baby dragon. Baby dragon. <laughs> baby dragon. So that's cool. Uh, it was all uh, <laughs> to take away from the whole thing's like um, making Geralt let go when he's new is like, yeah, I'm just gonna turn to a dragon and kind of fly me and my my girl to safety. <laughs> but I'm gonna do that like right under the fog so you yeah. can't see. <laughs> yeah. Like, are, are we? Have we fallen through enough fog? Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, I did. I did enjoy all the dwarfs being frozen. <laughs> they were just were fun. About them. Yeah, they were fun. There's gonna be way. There's gonna be a lot more fun dwarfs. Nice. Also in the games, there's a lot of characters. I want you to play the games because there's so many characters I want to. Definitely gives me the the itch to play. Good. All right, uh, we we are at the penultimate episode. I like how we're going for this stuff, but we're like barely touching on series stuff. Yeah, there's just not a whole lot to talk about. Yeah, I guess uh, somewhere in here, like, what did you? Th- I guess let's we'll stop. What did you think about the series story and the whole Doppler? That's at least what they're called in the games. The people who can take other people's skins and everything like that. Uh, I thought it was all fine and everything. I think um, series part as far as the three main characters is the weakest, yeah. but at the same time, um, her screen time seemed to be considerably less, and I think that's okay because this whole thing was. Getting Siri to Geralt at yeah. the end there, even though I now know in the books they didn't meet one right. one time before that the end of the season where they yeah. where they meet. Um, but I thought that stuff was fine, kind of getting an idea of okay, who's showing the stuff. Okay, Siri has some stuff going on with her. She has special powers, yeah. like at the close to the end of the season or at the end of the season where she kind of freaks out and does some kind of like demonic chanting crap and just kills everyone. And wakes up and everyone's like brutally impaled. And, and <laughs> the horse is skinned or something. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, it kind of, so. was the, the horse wasn't always white and red, right? <laughs> yeah. I <think> so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just kind of stuff yeah. like um, that and see that um, Nilfgaard, I want to say Nilfheim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does go. Yeah. Um, they're after her for some reason. There's out and kind of more of that kind of stuff to show. Okay, this is how, other than the stuff at Unifer, for how Nilfgaard and um, Geralt are going to clash and all that. I think this stuff's fine, especially since it was considerably less screen time. Mm. And I feel like we're going to get a lot more stronger series stuff. Yeah, my starting next season. My take on it is I agree with everything he's in. My take on it is I think if Siri and the way that this actress played her. I think if she played her like the very generic, like kind of damsel in distress e, or just like kind of adventure, but you know, if she had just came across as a kind of like either just generic heroic or just generic like running away from danger person or whatever, I think this arc would have been like really insufferable. Yeah. But I think that the way that she plays Siri, like Siri, is kind of a sassy kind of like not taking any shit (laughs) you know like she's she has personality like Mm -hmm. and i think that that actress does especially for a young actress like that i think she does a very good job of like showing that spunk and showing that personality and i think that makes that whole arc a lot well also like (laughs) and the actress is really good at this too showing that she is scared she is traumatized from all this yeah (laughs) which i yeah yeah especially i didn't think about until yeah you just kind of said she can't she kind of does a good way of doing both and right. the writers did it in a good way of writing her that way that it makes sense that 
she's the way she is. She's not just like stupidly badass despite everything she's got. You know, like it affects her and you see the effects, but she's also not just scared little girl that I feel like would have made this arc like Mm -hmm. a lot harder to stomach, you know. But uh, like, you know, some of her lines with like mouth sack and everything are really, really good. And, you know, she she can dish it out, you know, as well as she can take it. So, yeah. Yep. So that's Siri. Uh, so what was the penultimate? Like, I know the battle obviously happened at the end. What was this for? Geralt decides to invoke his law of surprise. Right. Yeah, yeah, fake. The, like, yeah. But yeah. Geralt isn't fooled. I mean, he was fooled until he kind of followed him. Which I, I do think, like, kind of quietly, I really do think Calanthe is, like, also one of the best characters in this whole yeah. thing. Like, her actress does a very good job of... Like, kind of, oh, yeah. Kind of thing of the th- things going full circle of timelines and stuff. I don't know if you remember this part necessarily, but in the beginning when Siri is playing uh, Knuckleball, or whatever the hell it's called, yeah. uh, with her friends, she looks over and there's, like, there's someone staring at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and then yeah, we find it's, out it's that it's her. It, it, yeah. it, it, it is Geralt. Yeah. You know, that, I, that thought that was a really cool touch. Yes. Yeah. At the time, I thought it was a um, Nilfgaard person. Yeah, but that was cool. That was really cool. Um, and yeah, I think Calanthe just like really nails that. Like she's almost like she's she's not, but she almost is reaching like Cersei levels at the end, where it's like I will kill, murder, and steal for my children. You know, like I will defy everything. Yeah, and again, the kind of thing that makes like I like the way they did the timeline is not over explaining where things are. Yeah. Is, when you kind of figure out that oh, Gerald is actually there when the Central when Falls, Central, yeah, yeah, when Central Falls, yeah, which is neat. One thing that's kind of <laughs> I always found weird to kind of um, throughout the whole thing, Calanthe doesn't look like a grandmother. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I look. Her actress is forty four, I think. <laughs> yeah, so I was that curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know doesn't. it's those times, so people don't. You know, have children young. You can be great, kill your food, no yeah. child. No. It's a thing, but yeah. yeah. When you think of like how many generations of you know that yeah. was her daughter and then it's her grandmother. But her being really young makes more can make sense in like just being a really young grandmother makes sense yeah. in the fact of in the first episode uh when the her big battle, which was her kind of her cr- yeah. big achievement, was mentioned that it just happened in the first episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Well, it's yeah. like Gerald old as fuck. She comes back bloody and like <laughs> yeah. dirty front. It is a little weird that she doesn't look like hardly any different yeah. <laughs> with this time skip, but eh. Eh. What you gonna do? Uh then we also get this is the set up of like Yennefer. Yeah, Yennefer returns to Eratusa. And that was it is kind of when you think about it, like I really do like Yennefer's art, but it is kind of it's crazy how much ground is covered from episode one to episode eight with Yennefer. Yeah. Like it, her setup to like, when, when you get to the end, like they're even making like callbacks to the beginning. It's like, this almost feels like the final season making callbacks to the beginning, but this is literally just in season one. No, it, <laughs> a lot more has happened like through Yennefer's arc than Geralt's in yeah, series. Yeah, 100%. Because <laughs> series arc takes place probably for like a couple of days yeah why well, Geralt is obviously years and universe is even longer than that it's like a long time yeah but it was it felt very weird like having them to, it's like these like and, and I, i'm guilty of like it got me i was like i was amped up i was like seeing the like callbacks to the beginning it was like yeah. it, it felt like these nostalgia callbacks i'm like i watched that episode yesterday <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> that's what we're making like this uh, this uh flashback to but mm-hmm. But it worked. I really yeah. do think it worked. And like, even yeah, it's crazy how much of an arc that like, she has in one season. And like, to side the Vries goes from like the badass or the, the kind of like strict mentor that's just abusive and that you know Yennefer is afraid of. She goes from that to like humbled and like Sorry. asking Yennefer for help in one season. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot we didn't talk about the eels. Oh uh, yeah, that was, we talked about it before. So yeah, I guess we should. The eels are pretty fucked up, right? The eels are pretty fucked up. <laughs> it's like the failed students become they get eels. Turned into eels forever. For, so, so they don't tell their fucking secrets. And they get juice, magic juice, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> magic but, eel juice. <laughs> and they just stand there and take turning into eels. Man, fucked up. Or fucked even up. maybe even more fucked up. She kind of like 
puts a spell on them so they don't resist. Yeah. Pretty fucked up. Yep. <laughs> Off but the, the chart. Thing, she's cool now. <laughs> yeah, but but like her. I mean, I guess Yennefer part, partook in this too, but Yennefer's like, fuck your system. Yeah. Fuck Eratusa. Eratus is just cool. There's a lot of cool names in mm-hmm. uh but yeah, this word like I kinda like uh Yennefer like going back to high school and being like corrupting the high school kids basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't have to listen to what, what yeah. the adults say. Yeah. <laughs> like as me they point out, hey Yennefer and Tris know each other, I guess, from their academy days yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. And I like the setup, which um I imagine like it has like kind of gone. It has, it, it has started going that way in the books, and I imagine it'll get more and more. But they set up the whole thing of like, hey, they what they teach you in magic school basically is actually only a fraction of what you can do. Yeah. There are other things out there. It's just very dangerous, and you know that's kind of fire but, magic. Oh, and it's kind of one of those things. It reminds me of Game of Thrones, like Game of Thrones. I guess I won't get specific, but in Game of Thrones, people in that world, like George R. R. Martin sets up that that world has a lot of traditions that everyone just like holds as sacred. So it's just assumed like, oh, everyone's going to uphold these traditions because that's the way we do things. So everyone operates under that tradition, that assumption. And then George R. R. Martin rips the rug out and it's like, hey, these people are idiots for assuming that that's the that people are gonna follow these traditions. Like, of course they'll they'll break these when their own personal gain, you know, come comes into play. And I think Witcher kind of does the same thing where it's like, no, everyone agrees you don't use the dark but evil magic. You just don't do that. It's like, no. If people like think that they can get one up uh, over you, they're gonna fucking do it. So they, I like that Yennefer is like, "Hey, the world sucks. You need to be prepared. Yeah, do the dangerous yeah, shit." I, I didn't find it <laughs> funny when they were named all the bad things like dark magic, necromancy, fire magic. <laughs> so, I, I mean, like, I'm a fire mage. I'm like, I kind of do that all the time. Yeah, this is, this is like I took fire 101. Like in my first video, I played too many JRPGs. Fire is the most basic, basic. ass magic. So that was freshman year class fire yeah. match. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. But uh yeah, I think again, they already have already feel like they're doing a better job whenever they went to the whole like um group of uh sorcerers and stuff to where like the yep, brotherhood. You recognize Stregerboard guy at the beginning. For for a brotherhood, there are a lot of w- women there. I think most of them were women. Okay, we need to change this name. Uh, to most, the sisterhood of the traveling uh, pants. Every memorable character I can think of from that whole group in games and books are all women. Yeah, like all the best characters out of them are women. In fact, the men are usually dickheads and incompetent. <laughs> yes, a lot of the women are also me. Like that whole group is full of a bunch of like traitorous, backstabbing people. Politics, <laughs> bureaucracy. It's yeah. bureaucracy, but with magic. Can you imagine if Donald Trump had magic? Let's move on. <laughs> and You'll I, turn this all <laughs> uh, With this fire magic. All right. Last episode. Big battle time. Mage battle. What did you think about the mage battle, Jeff? I thought it was pretty neat. Um, One thing that, yeah, you said the budget is not is there for like Game of Thrones. Right. Is the, you know, they did the... They, sh- they all do the CGI stuff where it looks like a bunch of soldiers are walking, but then when you get close, they're... Groups of soldiers, I don't know, barely past 30 most of the time I look like as far yep. as people actually there on screen. But I will give them this. I feel like um was really cool about it because the magic was really involved. The way they used magic to do really cool things like um the Fringilla opening the portal and the archer just shooting in mm. there. Yeah. And then it's hitting people like in the camp stuff. The stuff like that was cool, and I think that helps make up for the fact that they don't have the biggest of budget for like a big army, like right. fighting. Each I other. think they did the best with what they had. Yeah, and like it was cool to have you know a big battle scene like this in any capacity, and I think they did a good job of portraying the the whole dynamic that like, hey, if you're a normal regular human, 
you're gonna get fucked up by magic. Like yeah. if you're go- trying to go against a bunch of mages, they're gonna be able to wipe out thirty of you at a time. You know? No, but I also like. Um, sometimes it feels a little inconsistent, maybe with the mat- whole magic thing, but I do like it in here where it became quickly clear. Like, hey, magic is limitless. They fuck up the users a lot, mm-hmm. especially when you're doing this in all these battles and stuff. Like the guy who you pretty much like, who really likes to use his sword. Yeah. It's a pretty much a magic swordsman. Yeah. I think he even had the 11 sword derby. <laughs> um, but he can't do the whole making it back, come back in his scabbard or whatever too many times without his nose bleeding or him getting worn out or whatever. Yeah. Which I, I agree with you that that is like a really cool element that is inconsistent. I mean, it's inconsistent. I think in all of which are, they use yeah. it, they use it when it, <laughs> when it would be cool to use it and they kind of brush it away when it's not, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the whole thing with the sorceresses is, is like they made their sacrifice in their transition and their transformation. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I think the whole thing of them not being ha- able to have kids and other like other things that they like burned away, like they, they changed in their body. I think that's supposed to be like their sacrifice, basically. But you know, it's a little. It would be cooler if it's like to use this my skin's melting oh god (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. uh but i agree and i'm i'm hopeful because when you look back in season one of game of thrones there was like there's really no big battle in there there was battles that they they cut away they were like implied battles because they didn't have the budget to really do all of them and i'm i'm hopeful because it really does seem like this show is taking off probably way more than netflix even imagined so i'm hoping that yeah i really do think the next um season's gonna have a much higher budget you know mm-hmm. and so i think the next time there's a big battle I'm, i feel like it probably will look yeah a good bit better it's always gonna be a little harder because game of thrones didn't have people shooting fi- like magic and doing all these different things like there were magical elements and cgi stuff but it wasn't quite as you know, a mage battle is kind of a heart. That's that's a lot of CG you have yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, and then on Geralt's end, I, like I really like this uh, guy in the wagon. He was really adorable trying to save yeah. save uh, Geralt the whole time, which I I, I thought that was hey, really butcher. cool. And then you get to we got a little glimpse at uh, Geralt's mother. Mm, yeah. yeah, and uh, like a fever dream, basically. Yeah, which um I thought was. I, Why are you calling me that name? <laughs> Where'd you get that name? Why'd you say that name? Why'd you say that name? <laughs> Where were you, <laughs> Rachel? <laughs> Rachel, Rachel. I like we just kind of buy into Batman memes. Yep. <laughs> you got another one? Can we, can we get the combo going? I'm burning. <laughs> Damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I thought this was cool, and I thought this uh kind of showed. I mean, everyone was already impressed by Henry Cavill. And then I think this was like, oh, here's a whole nother emotion you haven't seen from him. Like, mm-hmm. pure anger and kind of, like, hurt. You know, he was, like, personally hurt. And like, I don't know. I thought it was really cool and it's setting up things. That's a lot of stuff that I don't even really know about from the books. Like, I, you know, I don't really. I think, like, his parents are kind of a mystery. So, mm-hmm. so that's interesting. Yeah. Gotta figure it would get better and make it to the battle. But nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah. No, nope. he just wasn't the part of that, which is kind of cool. You don't need to. They Gar- the thing that Gar- Gar- kind of save the day every time. Yeah. While uh, Head Mage Lady was screaming out for Yennefer, they showed him there as well, screaming out for Yennefer. Yeah. Yeah. I just took that as like a vision thing or something. No. And then we have the final reunion. Not reunion, first time union. <laughs> of, yeah. uh, first Geralt, meeting. <laughs> first meeting of Geralt and Siri. The destiny has bring, brought them together. I think there was some line that was like, you know, people who are destined together will always find each other. They did to the point where it's like, girl in the woods. Oh shit. Let me run in the woods. Oh shit. She's a girl in the woods. <laughs> and uh, then she she says, who's Yennefer? And then credits. Yep. And that's a wrap. It's like, fuck, I wait a year. Fucking 2021, dude. Dude. But I'm so gl- I'm so glad you like this so much, mm-hmm. Jeff. I, uh, that makes me very happy. Really well done so far. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I'm curious to see what now that we're kind of getting, I guess, mainly paths of short story stuff. Yeah. How much more like maybe liberties they're going to take things. I did actually see something um, that someone said they read that apparently they're t- looking at p- potentially doing at least one other short story. They mentioned one in particular. I can't remember the name of it. I have I no know. idea what it's about, but they mentioned when, it's not one that Syria is in, but they, they would just insert Syria into it. No. Nah. There you go. Just it's happening. Geralt's doing a thing, but series there. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, I I can't remember all the stories or like how yeah. they all worked. Um, but as long as it like you know, and, and it's the way they do it. As far into, as that, I, I mean, there is a whole nother like most of the sh- stories they did out of this was in the Last Wish, and there's there's two short story books. Yeah. So I think only like two of them max were um part of sort of Destiny. So they could technically do a whole nother season of short stories. I, I hope they don't. You know, I I love the short story thing for the setup, but I think it, now it's time to move into the you know yeah the full novel, especially now with them together and everything else like that. But, so that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I, I'm expecting it's mainly going to be um, main novel stuff, or maybe a short story or two, just kind of mixed in there. Yeah, where they feel like it fits organically. Yeah, but it probably won't. Yeah, like you say it. it it'll be harder for it to be as much of like grab the story, throw it straight into the TV show. It's going to be a little more like a normal adaptation now where they have to pick and choose and decide what they, yeah. they do, you know, which they, they've obviously already done some with Siri and Unifer, but um, it's going to be interesting. It's cool. Cause it's, a, it's something that I don't have as high of stakes of them doing everything identical as much as I did with game of Thrones. Because you know, I'm I Game of Thrones. I'm obsessed with those books. I'm a lot less so. I'm like don't love the Witcher novels, like reading them. So it's like you know, I'm a little more open to like, just tell me a cool story. Yeah. yeah. Well, before we get, I did want to like shout out. Like, we talked a little shout out. Shout out. Uh, we, did, we talked a little bit off camera, and I was tweeting about like I just kind of love how open this team is. Like the Witcher team has been about the Witcher. And uh, one of the lead writers, Lauren S. How would you say that, Jeff? Hisrick? 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 Lauren S. Hisrick? She's like, she's an awesome follow on Twitter because she's been just responding to like all, like almost any fan that says stuff and like being very open and honest about like, yep, see we that. had to. <laughs> she sounds she sounds like Gollum. It's really <laughs> funny. Um, but she uh she's just been very like refreshingly honest about like making this thing. Like mm-hmm. someone would be like, Hey, why'd you change this? And she she will respond to them. She'll actually like most people just will respond. She'll actually respond to that. Yeah, we really had to think about this and go back and forth, but we yeah. we decided that this was best for T and she'll even say, like, oh, we did this because you know, we have to do this for TV audiences. We have to keep people interested. So it just didn't make sense to do this or whatever. And that's just like, I love the honesty. I love just going out there and saying, and she's saying like, please go read the books. Please, please go read the books. Yeah. Cause I want, you know, want you to experience the story in that way too. It's just cool. I'm Yeah. I can tell from it. I'm sure she's just her and their whole team actors and production crew and all that writers are also happy the reception for this yeah. i'm sure maybe they were potentially a little bug reading the um critic reviews when they first came out before I, you know general audience has got to see it but after that it's kind of like it's, it's been nothing but positive it's wild how polar opposite the yeah. critics to well, well even his thing even the critics one it's 58 on the tomatoes so that means more than half of them like it but. yeah but it's just i mean because but the- it's not a thing of about 60 percent of general audience love it it seems to be a lot more than that the people that are right the fan watching it and going through it overwhelmingly positive and like i don't know i feel like the witcher netflix is something that could have been hurt by reviews like i was worried about being hurt by reviews because like this isn't star wars this was not a guaranteed success in fact i think me and you both thought there was a good chance this thing flops even if it's good you know it's yeah, not a lot of people know The Witcher. Gamer people know The Witcher, and like like some fantasy readers know The Witcher. Yeah, but like, like, my- Witcher's not like the most like well known thing. Like yeah. I could have seen this, or even if not flopped, I could have. I, I am surprised that it's like the number one show right now. Yeah. Like it's topping Mandalorian right now, and like that's so yeah. very surprising. Um, I, I'm not surprised that the critic reviews did things didn't affect it because honestly. Um, and let me know if you feel differently or have examples or something. I feel like it, critic reviews for TV shows don't really affect much. 
Yeah. At I least compared so. to like yeah. movies and games yeah. and stuff. I can see that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a lot less effort to go turn on Netflix and try this than yeah, go out exactly. to a movie theater. Yeah, then, then you got to go pay extra to do movies yeah, and games yeah. and stuff. But also, it obviously, what made the thing such a success is the very quick and very positive word of mouth. It's like, now everyone's talking about it and most people are generally loving it. Book and people love, and non-book people alike. I love the binge. I love the fact that it's all there. You can just go through the, the whole The downside thing. of that binge is the fact we got to wait longer in between seasons. Yeah, I mean, not not that much. I mean, that, that two whole months, Darby. <laughs> but I, I, I <laughs> so as a viewer, I so much prefer this. Yeah. I do think that the week to week thing can be better for certain shows. Like, I don't think it's a one size fits all. And like for reception and being talked about, I think the week to week can be better. But as a fan viewer, I think the binge thing I, is a lot. Better. I think with the. Game of Thrones is an example of one I think week to week is good. Yeah, it would be hurt if it all just came out. Witcher, is, particularly this season, I think it was beneficial to it because oh. with the timeline stuff, just being able to go one episode to the next. I think even me and you were super high on the timeline thing. I think we would probably be worse on it if it had been week to week because mm-hmm. I think it would have gotten a lot more confusing. It would have been, you know, if you yeah. weren't able to go boom, boom. So. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, it's. I think it's just again, it's not a one size fits all. BoJack Horseman would be a lot worse if it was week to week because they they try a lot. Like the binge model lets them try a lot of experimental things mm-hmm. that like you're happy about because you can go right to the next one. If you wait it all week and then the episode was an entire monologue, you're already going to be kind of like, even if it's really good, you're going to be looking at it in kind of a. Uh, this is our only episode this week. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't get to see, you know so. Yeah, I am very curious to see how big this does get because it's honestly just from what I've seen, just from general receptions, I don't I can't remember the last time for a Netflix series in particular, or the buzz around this much buzz around Netflix series other than Stranger Things, of course. Yeah, no, I can't either. Which means which is crazy to think about because we kind of see it, but we might see Witcher stuff in Hot Topic, for example, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, you toss the coins to your Witcher shirts? Mm. Yeah. Darn, no, 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 that's one of the things. It's already in there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's already like, being sold. Yeah. Oh, also, I one thing I just remembered I really like, um, the the title thing where it always had different emblems and stuff, yeah. and then the final joke, yeah. they all converge into Geralt's. That was hype. Yeah. That was hype, <laughs> dude. That's dope. <laughs> So yeah, no, I am pleasantly surprised. Obviously, how the series is and how it's being received and all that. And it's neat to see a bunch of people going into the game. I, so I think it's a good you bit. Of be people, one of those people. Yeah, people going to replay the game. People who kind of got it but didn't go back to it. I imagine they're gonna be people buying the game. For Me, the first time. who never finished the DLC, and I just did. And the holy shit, Jeff is so good. <laughs> they're so good at writing. Now, obviously, there are gonna be people buying the books, and now it's gonna be a thing of oh great, now I kind of have. Before I didn't really care about avoiding Witcher spoilers from the books necessarily, <laughs> but I was like, I well, I don't want to see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just play the game. Yeah, it's a totally different story anyway. Yeah, but what I hear it seems like it spoils some things, like as far as ge- general things. Yeah, it'll be general things, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. There are definitely some things that they reference, like happened in the past that we're after this, but. It's not like I mean the books well, the, the oh, books I mean, themselves aren't even done, so it's not gonna like it's yeah. not like it's you know yeah. I just imagine all those sort of like general series things about yeah. more exactly what her deal is. Yeah, I mean that's how I found. I mean you you you'll be you'll be finding those you'll be spoiled in the same way I was spoiled. You yeah, know, yeah. that that's what I. Yeah, as far as the wrong word so. in a way, I am experiencing that from a medium. Yeah, it's not like I'm reading a post on Twitter that'd be a spoiler, but yeah, okay. you know what I mean. No, but I'm going to really excited to see where this goes, Derek. So we got to wait a while. Yeah, I'm I'm so, so, so pleased that this came this way. I needed this after Game of Thrones this year. <laughs> I needed this. And after Mandalorian? Yeah, and after the Mandalorian. I think you should finish his last few episodes. I, I, I will. There's only two episodes. But, so, I will. But Carol and Tuesday has, has priority. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care if you watch Mandalorian. I'm just saying for you. <laughs> like, sorry, universe, but I mean, I'm not. I will not apologize for watching Carol on Tuesday. That shit's good. All right, thank you guys so much, and maybe Carol on Tuesday spoiler cast soon. 
And May Watchmen at some point. May Watchmen. I think that's our watch order. Sort of Infinite content. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Toss a coin to him. He deserves it.